Good morning from a small provincial town somewhere in the eastern half of Belarus. About two months ago, I went to visit Kolya, who lives alone in a village in a radiation zone here, and I gave him some money. Anyway, it's winter, and I, um, I want to go back and see how he's getting on, see if he's made any improvements to his life, or, um, well, let's just see how he's getting on. Join me on the journey. I've hired a Kia. Let's do it. Oi, second. Autograph. Это первый раз в моей жизни, что я сделал autograph. Хорошо. Hello. Вы говорите на английском? Yes. Хорошо. Subscribe your channel. Wow, отлично. Спасибо, брат. Давайте, давайте. Очень приятно. Bye bye. Good bye. Good bye. That's my first ever autograph that I've given in my life. <laughs> I've just stopped off at a memorial in a village. It says, in memory of the depopulated villages. This is the region that, of course, was most heavily um, contaminated by the radiation from Chernobyl. And these are the name of the villages that were depopulated and then buried. Places like Zolotomsky, Labirevka, Linocharsk. Places that had a history of up to maybe a thousand years old in some cases. But then of course were bulldozed and left to rot back into the swamp, the swamps of the region. But of course not everyone left. And we're going to go and look for someone today, Kolya, of course, who refused to leave his ancestral homeland. And despite the dangers of the radiation, continued living there. And then finally, on this white wall, it just says simply, Chernobyl, our pain. Здорово. I think Google Maps must be drunk because it's taking me on, it's taking me off the highway onto this, well, what is basically a farm track through the radiation zone. Where the hell are we going, Google? This ain't the way, surely. Here's an old abandoned Soviet house of culture that he built in the villages. And this one is for sale, Prodayutsa. Let's go and look inside. What would you turn it into? Village nightclub, I know. Ooh. Whoa. Oh wow, okay. So this was the theater. It was the cinema and the theater, the clubhouse up there is the stage. Of course, everything of value has been taken. The floorboards have been taken. But you can see there the old stage. You can imagine the Soviet citizens sitting here and watching performances in the evening. Performances maybe about bringing in the harvest, you know, glorifying the Soviet Union, glorifying Stalin. And then I suppose when the Nazis came to the village in the 40s, the plays changed and instead here, different performances were held glorifying Hitler. Wow, Belarus has seen so much history on such a small piece of land. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna find when I get to Collier's house because I left him with the equivalent of what was about a year's pension money. And I remember my final words when I parted were, don't spend too much of it on alcohol, but Collier's his own man. So I'm not sure what I'm going to find when I get there. I just hope, I just hope we haven't killed Collier. Let's hope he's all right. I just want to quickly show you how fluid borders are in this part of the world. How they meander, look. This here, this field here and these trees, everything you can see is Belarus. 
Yes, Belarus, Lukashenko, Belarus. But here, on the other side of the road, is Russia, the mighty nation that spreads all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Putin and um, who else is Russian? <laughs> Dima Bilan, some of you might know. Ala Pogacheva, Yuri Gagarin. Anyway, they come from that land, which I will not tread on. I will not tread on Russian land because then I will be um, in breach of some Russian law or other. But yeah, there we go. Russia, Belarus, Olga Corbett. Well, I found the turn off <laughs> to his house. I'm nervous. Oh my God, what are we going to find here? Let's do it. Man. What if he's not in? What if he's just not in? Who am I going to ask where he is? Oh, anyway. Let's try it. <laughs> I'm nervous. Wow, it's such a different climate than last time I was here. It's so barren as well. Look at the trees in the garden, how it's so empty. All right, let's see. Gloria, Stalin, Titut. Obviously not home. Bugger! <laughs> That's an anti-climax. Golia! Oh man. What to do? I mean, where could he have gone? What's your options when you when you live alone in a village in the radiation zone? Bugger. Maybe he emigrated when we gave him the money. <laughs> Man. He does kind of just have a feel that, like, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, that he doesn't live here anymore. I don't know why I feel like that. Maybe he went to the cemetery. Hope I don't get lost here in the radiation forest. <laughs> Crikey. This trip's turning into, <laughs> but it's not going quite to plan. Where's the cemetery? Golia! Titut! Thank God for that. Man, I don't know what to do. It's not home, he's not here. Where else is there to look? Call ya! Ah. Just abandoned houses in the middle of the forest. Call ya! Thought I yes. Oh, it looks like it's actually got curtains in the window. Oh, maybe it's not abandoned. Oh man. That's the entrance. Strong Blair Witch vibes. <laughs> Empty. Abandoned long ago. Well, either 
I sit here and wait, but he might not be coming back, or I drive to the nearest village or find the nearest house and ask if they know something. I said, oh, fuck me, I'm destroying this car hire, this hire car. Bloody hell. If you own a hire car company and I come knocking, trust me, turn me away. The car's coming back irradiated <laughs> and smashed to bits. Well, this just looks like more abandoned houses. And maybe one of them's inhabited. Hopefully, we can find someone. Who knows old Collier? I reckon Collier's well known in these parts anyway. So if we can find someone, they'll probably know what the story is and where he is. But look at this, just abandoned houses everywhere. There's a house here with some chickens. Have a knock. Oh yeah, someone's living here, look. Hello. Можно? in villages you don't knock on doors you knock on windows wow what a place someone coming <clears throat>